Glaucoma is a disorder of the eye typically caused by increased intraocular pressure. This elevated pressure in turn causes damage to the optic nerve and peripheral vision loss which can eventually progress to central vision loss. It is usually treated with medications which are typically taken once, twice, or even three times a day. Because I see a fair amount of glaucoma patients, from time to time people will ask me about whether glaucoma can be treated with marijuana. I think it's high time we found out. It's a beautiful day in Central Florida. If you've a medical question that makes you go, huh? Just ask it now, just ask it now. Don't save it for later. Hi, sir. I'm Dr. Vijanandan Nagaswaran. Uh, uh, Dr. Nate is fine. So, your glaucoma test came back today. Totally normal. Hey man, I have a question for you. Sure, what? Does smoking marijuana help treat glaucoma? Well, according to the Academy of Ophthalmology, studies are inconclusive <gasps> at best. It seems to have very short-term effects, so you probably have to smoke six to eight times a day to really have any kind of you look delicious. benefit for any true. I'm sorry? You look delicious. Wait. Are you high right now? Nah, oh, man. Well, maybe. Well, that explains why it took you over two hours to fill out the check-in paperwork. As medical marijuana becomes more of an accepted treatment option, there are many questions as to the range of diseases it can treat. As a class one narcotic on the federal level, Regardless of state laws, it is difficult to conduct clinical trials as a result. As federal guidelines eventually loosen, that will hopefully open up possibilities in the future. In the meantime, let's go over the data that exists right now. Medical marijuana can be separated into two categories. THC, which binds endocannabinoid receptors in the brain strongly and gives these stereotypical euphoria symptoms, and CBD, which binds weakly and doesn't give a high. In 1980, a study was done where patients were given inhaled THC and they were found to have decreased eye and blood pressure 60 to 90 minutes afterwards. The problem is that it didn't last very long and since the intraocular pressure needs to be treated consistently 24 hours a day, someone would have to use THC 6 to 8 times a day, which is impractical from a logistic and financial standpoint. THC eye drops have been explored in mice and they were found to have a substantial decrease in pressure of about 28%, lasting 8 hours in male mice and only 4 hours in female mice. While CBD is usually thought to have no effect on the intraocular pressure, in this particular study, both male and female mice had a small increase in the pressure after CBD eye drops. From other studies, THC eye drops, pills, and cigarettes have been tried but were found to be unpalatable by patients due to the side effects. Sublingual THC given under the tongue was not found to be helpful in lowering the pressure. As such, the stance of the American Academy of Ophthalmology and the American Glaucoma Society is not to recommend marijuana as a viable treatment for glaucoma at this time. As further studies seek to isolate the working compounds, make them long lasting, and decrease the side effect profile, that opinion can always be reevaluated. As always, thanks for joining us at Dr. Raja's Neighborhood. We'll see you next time.